go from here. Joining me right now on set, Bullseye Brief founder, Adam Johnson. Bonson Group founder, David Bonson, and our very own Lori Rothman, who's live from New York Stock Exchange. And I, Adam, I could tell you, I, I'm annoyed. I'm frustrated at this party right now because I think that they had every opportunity to get repeal and yes. replace done. They squandered that opportunity. They screwed it up. And my concern right now is they could do the same darn thing with tax reform. I tell you why they're not going to do that. They're actually going to get this one right because if they don't, they don't get reelected. This is political survival, and the knife's edge is as sharp as it can possibly get. Repeal and replace was something that we tossed around for months, actually years, as you point out, but no one really was going to live or die by that. Tax reform, they'll live or die by it. they got to get it done. Okay, you know, I mean, you've seen a market, Lori, that basically has been bidding things up. You know, prices keep going higher in the equities markets because people expect that tax reform is going to happen. And as you know, that's going to be very beneficial to how earnings look, how it set everything is, right, oh, in the economy. I, I say this is Econ 101. But if it 100%. doesn't happen, Lori, how does the market react to that? And do these lawmakers then run the risk that they're yeah. out? People are done with them. So I totally agree with Adam, but from a market's perspective, I think, you know, we're circling around these record levels, 26 straight record closes for the Dow Jones Industrials. So some would argue the market's a bit frothy here. At the moment, it's pausing. We're having more than fewer, stronger, better than expected earnings here. We're in the midst of the latest second quarter earnings reporting season. So that's really where the focus is. But when you broaden the picture and bring politics in the game, especially tax reform, especially coming off uh, the gridlock with health care, um, if things don't go the way that the president promised when he was elected, um, we may see some trouble here for the bulls on Wall Street. You know, let's, let's talk about these rates. 35 percent. Guess what? Pretty much everyone else in the world does a better job when it comes to corporate taxes than us. We have the highest taxes. When you factor in state taxes, municipal taxes, the highest in the world. You look at Canada, what is it, 21% in Canada? You look at the UK, they do a better job on this. Ireland does a better job on this. Numerous countries throughout the Middle East do better jobs on this. We are penalizing over and over and over again, David, corporations for being here in this country. I don't get it because this is all wrong in terms of incentives. I think you could get bipartisan support on this one, will they? Yes, they will. And, and by the way, they're not just penalizing companies for what they're doing here. They're penalizing them for doing business overseas that is opening up new markets, creating new jobs, and, and is really a very growth-oriented expansion. The multinational companies... Wait, 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 wait. I want to stop you there. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying here because I think tax policy is all wrong when it comes to allowing these companies to be overseas and then they leave their profits overseas, right? Well, that, but that's Shouldn't exactly the point I'm making, Trish. That's exactly to, the point I'm making. Because why do you want to create jobs overseas? Bring that money back home, create those yeah. jobs here. Trish, it is absolutely untrue that those things are mutually exclusive. We do create jobs here when we create new markets overseas. We want customers overseas. We want people in involved in design and engineering and okay. accounting and all but aspects you do of American business here. That so we I don't should see those be allowing exclusive. those corporate profits that have already to come been back taxed here. once. Okay, of I'm just course. making sure we're on the same page on that, David, because that's another one that's a no-brainer. It's a complete no-brainer, and it is going to happen. Where the ex actual corporate rate gets set, I think, remains to be determined. I don't believe they're going to have to go all the way up to 25%. I don't believe they're going to get the 15% they threw out there. But somewhere in the low 20s, because I think they have a very intelligent, very well-planned yeah. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has done a remarkable job teeing up where they need to come in to get this done through reconciliation so they won't have and the yet, filibuster the border burden. border adjustment tax, Adam Johnson, dead. that has been, you think it's fully dead? Totally dead. And, yeah, it's and, an, it's and, an and unfair tax. And if you don't tax. have a way to pay for the tax cuts in the yeah. here and now, is that going to be a holdup? No, I'll tell you what, I think we can get the first 10 percentage points, in other words, the cut from 35 to 25, on a bipartisan basis. And I tell you why. Some people will tell you they're fudging the numbers, but they can do it effectively by fudging the numbers. Number one, they use what's called dynamic scoring. So as the economy grows, you can add those tax revenues in to help offset the cuts. And number two, you can actually lengthen the uh, time period by which you measure the impact of the of the uh, tax cuts. So again, some the critics will say you're just fudging the numbers, but guess what? You can actually, by 
adjusting those numbers, get both Republicans and Democrats to agree on it. You don't have to make cuts elsewhere. You know, uh, we need to grow this economy. Yeah. And, and one of the easiest sort of low-hanging fruit ideas out there is tax cuts. That will go a long way. Adam, David, Lori, thank you.